the first one was what category of visa did you apply for when i i was in there it gave us an option of a business like it, it's it has to be a short-term visa but it had a couple of options whether it's a business or a tourist so yeah i wasn't very sure which one should we pick so short term and uh tourist visa um and that that's what i picked and that's what most of my classmates uh picked you know and all of these things that i'll tell you right with all of the questions and answers this is my perspective but you know the thing to remember is uh none of this can be legal advice because you know people are uh everyone has such a unique situation so i'm just sharing you know for entertainment you know my information with you but you know you should double check all of this but uh, in my case i did tourist and uh, my situation was uh, i had uh, a green card us green card uh, and uh, and that's where i i did that way and most people who were from india so i have an indian citizenship right so uh, and us green card so my situation was that but depending on what your situation is uh, you would want to pick accordingly. But tourist is what most people picked in my whole batch. So independent of visa status. So tourist is safe. And some people picked, uh, I think, yeah, most people also picked short term because there were there people who were there for beyond the seven day. Um, so they were traveling before and after. So depending on that period, you would want to pick short term or not short term. So the way it works is that the dates that you get uh, is two weeks from the date that you start. You say, hey, I want, I'm gonna land on this date. They'll only give you for two weeks window. So if you plan to be a day before, then you wanna definitely start on the day when you ex expect to land. So start date should be the date. Uh, but if you expect more than two weeks, then it's not short term anymore. So you would, uh, you would want to think through because some people, I think one or two stayed beyond, like before and after they had trips, they were uh, having fun. Uh, and so if it's less than two weeks, uh, and if you're just going for immersion, it's short term, tourist. Got it, got it. Okay, so that that helps. Uh, my personal situation is same as yours, yep. and green card and Indian yep. citizenship, but yeah. It gets complex uh, when, so one of my batch mates was uh, H1B, right? It gets really complex uh, uh, in two fronts. One, if it's H1B is expired, then, um, you would want to make sure that you have a stamp, you know, that piece, right? But you it, it you can't get back in if it's expired with a stamp that's expired. So you'd have to go back to a country where you can apply for that stamp. Um, and as long as you have six plus months of H-1B stamp, then you, you're, you're good. But there are some, you know, things to think through if you're on H-1B. It's still possible, but it is it is a little bit more tricky. So just keep that in mind as well. If someone else, uh, this applies to in your batch, yeah. Okay, okay. And, and I was surprised to hear that uh, because the, some of the family members may choose to join after one week. And and I was I thought maybe short term gives you longer than two weeks, but no, it looks like it's not. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. And my situation was such that. Uh, I had a pretty, we'll go through this whole thing, but uh, my situation, I learned quite a bit because I had missed my batch. I didn't even attend my batch. I had, you probably remember I was doing their office hours. I had, I could only do the following week. And luckily the seniors and but twenties were doing the following week. So it was back to back. So I could attend because of my visa situation. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just two weeks. I was just barely, I just barely made it. So keep that lens in mind too. Okay, all right, so that is helpful. So the next question was, uh, so that people start the process in time. I'm just curious, uh, how long did it take for you from the time you started your on, I, I think this process is you apply, you fill out a form online and from yeah. there on how long it takes. Yeah, I'll tell you uh, the process. I've written it down, but there are still some intricacies. But before I do that, right? If there are more questions, right, just ask whoever you want to ask. Saying, hey, keep adding to this questions list because we'll get through this very quickly. Uh, so if there's more, you know, add add to them or ask people to contribute to this uh, because then I'd just love to take all of them at the same time. Um, but in a sense, the v VFS process is, is the first step. 
VFS is this agency, private agency that most um, countries have just, you know, consulates have given them, you know, if, you, if you've done the India visa, you know what VFS is, right? So same for Denmark. So you'd have to book the closest VFS in-person appointment where they expect you to come uh, and uh, give them your passport. And they are the middlemen which take your passport and then they send it to the New York, Denmark consulate. And uh, they their SLA is, uh, they say two to six weeks. So you could assume four to six weeks, uh, meaning that's their time. They can, they can take that long. And there's like uh, one to two weeks for the Denmark consulate itself once they've received it. So the way it works is it goes from your hand to the VFS office in uh, the location where you booked your appointment. They will courier all that documents and your passport to New York. And then from New York, that gets shipped back to you at your direct home via FedEx. Um, there's this tricky part about FedEx, which I'll answer in the questions below. But in my case, what happened is, uh, maybe we'll, we'll just answer it right here. Um, VFS will create a FedEx tracking sheet for you. It'll give you a tracking number. Uh, but that tracking number is a dummy tracking number. So remember that. Uh, because what they do is they create a package. So I live in San Francisco, and then they give me a tracking number that says, um, so the way it works, it's a little complicated, but they are basically paying, VFS in San Francisco is paying for a package that goes from New York to San Francisco, right? Uh, so they are actually creating a, a slip that says, hey, this package that you will track because the actual package that's gonna come to you, it's gonna come from New York, right? So they'll give you a, a tracking number that is your actual tracking number that will get activated once the New York consulate ships it to you in San Francisco. Let's say you're in San Francisco. Um, and so what it happens is it's actually the first two weeks, that number is a dummy number because you know it's not activated. They've paid for a slip that's gonna be activated in the future. So what I ended up doing was I was tracking that tracking number and it showed me that, hey, this package is, is uh, starting San Francisco and ending San Francisco. It didn't even tell me that it's going to start in New York and end in San Francisco. So remember this piece. It's very confusing because after three weeks, that tracking number will have a duplicate entry in FedEx. So it's very complicated because you'll have to, and I have a link here that you should use uh, in uh, the FedEx question below, which basically, you know, you would have to remove that parameter, the URL link and actually see that there's a duplicate record and then go to the second link of the same ID. The FedEx will tell you that, hey, there's a duplicate record found of the same ID. And I was tracking by mistake an older ID, but I should have been tracking the other tracking number, which is of the same number, by the way. So it's, it's, an, it's an issue. So remember that, that uh, you would want to check this link that's here and actually make sure that you, you track the package that's your package. And it's not a dummy package that will always say, the package has not even left the facility. The package has not even left the facility. And you're just wondering what's happening. So remember this gotcha with FedEx. It's, uh, they, and the reason why it happens is because they do this, this uh, payment from San Francisco, from New York to SF. So it, it automatically should go away and should not have the duplicate. But in my case, it was always a duplicate. And I was tracking the older link. So that's that thing. It took quite a bit of time. Um, but it, in my case, it took end-to-end -to -end eight weeks. Um, plus one week really, but eight to nine weeks, you can say, from the time I gave my passport to the time I actually got it back in hand. Um, but you can expect at least seven weeks. So I know it's a little complicated, but hopefully you got it, right? So make sure that you track using the link that's here. Uh, and we can even share this doc with everyone if you want. Um, and it'll give you both of those links with the same IDs and you have to click both and see which one is, is from New York to your home, not the one from your con you know from the appointment center to your home so that's that's the issue got it and you you pay for this fedex at the vfs you yes. don't bring your own own fedex yeah you pay it there they create a slip for you right there and they'll ask right you there. me i paid like 85 dollars or something yeah okay okay got it yeah it, it, it's it seems a VFS. like Denmark. Denmark is a bit slow. I've done Schengen visa a few times, maybe five, six times in the past, but all through France. And they were pretty quick, like one to two weeks. They would get, give it back to you within two weeks. Yeah, this this VFS is, is very slow. And uh, 
you'd want to be really patient when you go there. I don't know if, where you live, but in SF, uh, I arrived half an hour before the appointment. I waited one hour post my appointment time. So one and a half hours, I was just waiting to be called. So you you need a lot of buffer. <laughs> so keep that lens in I mind. See. And you need a lot of patience because uh, if you if you set it up before and after your meeting, it's going to be pretty hard. Uh, and it's a lot of line. You'll have to stand there for a long time. So it was, uh, VFS is a pretty different experience. So just be prepared for mm. it. You should read the Google reviews for VFS San Francisco. And it's actually very true. I read it after the fact. So it's actually very true. Wherever, whichever your center is yours, you should read the reviews and be prepared um, and uh, go with the checklist complete, fully complete. And the checklist, that's the next okay. one, had, right? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, before I move to the next one, I, I tried looking up for appointments and it was, my, I'm in San Diego, the nearest that I have is LA. So I was looking for LA and it was, it, it was responding that no appointments available at this time. And then I started looking into San Francisco. San Francisco had it just said your earliest appointment as this date, but it, did, it didn't provide me an option to pick the appointment date. Maybe I didn't go very far into the process. Maybe in the end, it lets you pick the appointment date yes. in time. Is it that, lets you. It lets right? you pick the. It'll give you lots of options. But it, it starts with that, which is it tells you what's the earliest, so that you know, like, hey, do I really want to spend my time? Or is it like, uh, you know, uh, do I need to come back later? But yes, you get lots of options depending on, like in my case, I had, I had options only four weeks after the current date when I was looking. So it was not even immediate. So just be prepared uh, to start very early. And this is something you can start much earlier. Um, that's the biggest tip I would give, which is uh, create the VFS profile, uh, pay the nominal fee that you need to pay and that doesn't that doesn't start the timer get the appointment sooner so you know when is it open and when can you get it um and i was yeah in my case it, the closest one there was only one slot available in the next four weeks and after that it was after six weeks so i i couldn't even uh, i just picked whatever was available i see yeah, I'm running into that for, with LA. They didn't even say, they said no appointments available. It wouldn't even let me go to the next page. So, yeah. but San Francisco was available and maybe when we- You should pick San Francisco. There, if, I were, if I were you, I would just pick San Francisco and pick whichever is the earliest, right? If, yeah. you, if you're looking for, I don't know what your dates are, but like uh, pick the one that's earliest and as soon as you can get it done. Yeah, I can, I can probably merge it with a block because we're there for- to uh, for Berkeley anyways yeah and maybe I can, I can combine that okay good idea. All so, right. so, so there are two things here right just to take away one is you can start booking the appointment much sooner versus the the window of when you can apply for visa so start that much sooner so you know okay hey this is anyways going to be six seven eight weeks out so you want to start mm -hmm. that process with vfs much sooner Got it, got it. Okay, so the next is what documents did you have to provide and you have provided a detailed checklist link there. All right, did you have to have the air tickets booked prior to the visa book? So I'll say yes for the checklist. Okay. Yes, then good idea. The hotel reservation uh so this reservation is done by the po office now will they have this that early that is my question or yeah in my in our case uh we had to book it ourselves so because you know we were not sure what would happen but yeah they should have whatever you need um in this situation yeah okay i'll reach out uh, because for example dc immersion and others sometimes uh, the reservation is not that much in advance. Uh, you get it like maybe two months in advance, but now that we're going for a visa now, so I'll check with Kirsten. Maybe she has some tips on, on the reservation. Maybe we, we can do a non-refundable, oh, sorry, a refundable reservation ourselves. Yeah. The, that, that, the book, the ticket, uh, the, the place, the default place where we stay in Denmark, yeah. 
uh, is is like refundable to the last hour, like last day or something. So they fully refundable. And I had ended up doing that for my situation. So it's actually a really good hotel um, and very flexible. Okay, got it. So that is clear. Did you need an invitation letter from someone in Denmark? No, but we didn't need anything specific. Okay, understood. Uh, anything from, because we're doing it as a tourist visa, I don't know if we need any documentation from Berkeley in terms of what we're going to do no. there. Don't no. remember anything that we needed. Okay. Uh, you already talked about the FedEx tracking. Uh, then you have a tip there on any advice, like make the FedEx package value $3,000 or something. Correct. Oh yeah. So they'll ask you this, which is they'll ask you like, Hey, what's the, what's the value of your package? So I only, my package was lost. And that's when I realized, Hey, this was, uh, this is not worth the hundred dollars that I just, you know, flimsily told them like, Hey, put it hundred dollars. <laughs> like who cares? But then I, when I realized, Oh, if I had to get my green card back, it would take me a thousand dollars. If I had to get all the visa stamps, it would take me another few thousand dollars. Uh, and so it's actually very expensive if they lose your package, uh, the passport and your green card and everything. So you better make it actually a high value. And it's, it's you know, they that was something I, I regretted, like, because I complained to FedEx and they're like, oh, um, you'll get a hundred bucks. You know, I'm like, no, it's worth so much more. So make it really what you think it's worth and then make FedEx be liable if they don't handle it well. So that is one place where I realized I made a huge mistake after making it. So do that. And then the other piece is on the delivery from New York, it's best to tell FedEx to keep it at their location and then you pick it up in the nearest FedEx office instead of them delivering because I've I went into lots of details here once my package was lost. I did lots of forensics. But in a sense, there's so many ways in which FedEx can screw up. One is they could just keep it in the package room. Uh, in my case, I'm in a community where there's a package room and then someone can pick it up from the package room. They can keep it in their... Uh, uh, they could not deliver, but say it's delivered and it comes next day. They could keep it in their... Uh, you know, van and, and say it's delivered, but it's actually not delivered. And, you know, they, they, they do some search and then they find, oh, it's in the van. So, you know, so there's lots of things that can happen. You can eliminate all of that saying, hey, keep it at my locus, loc uh, nearest FedEx office. I'll pick it up. Don't deliver it. This is my passport. I will do this work to pick it up. Uh, it's, it's totally worth it uh, is, is what I would say for those FedEx things, right? Those two tips. Great. Okay. And and one last question that I had was, was there anything with respect to COVID? Uh, any, did they ask for vaccination card? Did they ask for other documentation outside of the checklist? No, just I had my card, COVID card, and uh, no one asked me anything, anytime, ever. Uh, so I didn't need anything. Okay, so that clarifies. Uh, yeah, and one of the checklist item while I was going through it uh, was uh, insurance. Uh, did you also oh, you use Insubai to buy the insurance for yeah. the week? Yeah, okay. and it's it's worth it. You you pay ten dollars and then. Uh, you get it for a week and then it's like 100,000 coverage and just go with max coverage. Um, uh, start early and then take as conservative steps as possible, but because they're going to take away your passport, your green card, like pretty much every document and it's going to be gone for like six weeks minimum. So you would want to be conservative here in terms of planning and delivery and pickup and, and tracking and, and all of that, right? Uh, it's only when you don't have it is when you realize, oh my God, I just am in a deep problem here. You know, so be conservative. So you actually take your green card, physical green card as well? Yes, I was I, I was like, when they asked me last minute, I know they wanted a copy. So I had copies, but they actually shipped my green card away from here to New York and all of that. So it is very scary. But yeah, they, they do ask for all of that. <laughs> okay. I mean, it makes sense they're asking for passport because they want to stamp it in the passport, but I'm surprised they're asking for the green card as well. Yeah. 
Yes, so that's the situation. Be ready for it. <laughs> All right, okay. let's go through the rest. My battery is going to die out soon. So no, I, I think that was the last question. Kunal, I, I personally don't have anything more. I also shot a message to a few of my friends if they okay. have any further questions. But uh, un, unless you have any further advice, I think so I'm through. Two things, right? There is a link info.dkus at vfshelpline.com. That's the VFS uh, helpline. It's useless. So they'll make you feel like work is happening. And I have sent 15 to 20 emails. Loki has probably sh shared 50 or 100 emails. They'll keep saying, oh, yes, yes, we're working. But it never does go anywhere, even if there's weeks of work. But there's this other email, which is the Denmark consulate email. They're very, very good. They, they're on point. They'll reply quickly. And that's also in their New York visa at um.dk. And there's also their number. That number is only available for an hour or two per week. And it's an Eastern Standard Time. So I, week, I missed like two weeks because of I like missed that hour. Or I, I thought it would be there for three hours because the website said it's three hours. It's not three hours. In the voice instruction, they'll tell you that it's only for an hour if you want to talk to them. So just check all of these things before so that uh, you can you can get in touch with them. And so those links and those numbers are directly in the doc. That will help you quite a bit. Um, the only thing I would take, take away from this is start early, um, get the appointment set up, make sure you are conservative, put a high package number, uh, value number for your package, um, FedEx package. And then you're fine. And then it's, uh, and SAS was a breeze. I, I enjoyed that airline quite a bit. So that was surprising, but I didn't have any other options. I just took it um, to make it on time. So, yeah. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, you will learn quite a bit. There's a different way of uh, um, being immersed in that culture. So it's going to be fun. So enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, Kunal. I know it's late. Thanks for uh, taking time. Uh, I will share this document with yeah. some of the other friends who are in similar situation and and let them know that they can reach out to you in case there's any other questions. Yeah. Yeah. I'll 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 edit this uh, and then put it in the Emba uh, YouTube playlist so anyone can you want to send it to anyone that's fine too. Anyone can see it after that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, man. Good luck. Okay. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.